Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Insane Med. If you guys are new here, hi. I'm Suprita. I'm a doctor from India and I'm currently on my USMLE journey. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how I passed USMLE step 1 in just 4 months. And mind you guys, I did not use any of the conventional resources like Boards and Beyond or Pathuma. So if you guys want to find out what I actually used and uh, avoid few mistakes that I made that I think you guys should definitely not be doing in your USMLE prep, please do stick till the end and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's start with my timeline first just to give you guys an overview. Um, started studying for step 1 around September 15th um, ish and um, yeah so I started studying from September 15th and I gave my exam on Jan 10th so that's basically September, October, November, December yeah almost four months and I got my results on 22nd Jan and I passed so yeah basically if I have to divide my timeline into pre-dedicated and dedicated period so I had uh, three months of pre-dedicated period until November and December was my proper dedicated period now what I mean by pre-dedicated and dedicated period is that in my pre-dedicated period I was mainly focusing more on uh, building a base gaining knowledge looking at video resources and basically assimilating a lot of knowledge that was my pre-dedicated period and I was putting in somewhere around six to seven hours per day for studying and when it came to the last month that is December I was in my dedicated period and this was the time when I was actually putting in around uh, 12 hours a day solving a lot of uh, questions every single day and I was taking a lot of uh, mock tests and practice tests and, and, and I was you know fine tuning myself I was uh, preparing myself basically to give the exam I was doing um, literally six to seven hour mock test so that I was simulating an actual exam so that was my dedicated period. In my pre-dedicated period I was just building my base and uh, learning in new information right so for this the first resource that I used is obviously the holy grail of <laughs> USMLE that is first aid for USMLE step one this is a wonderful wonderful book but this is not um, a comprehensive textbook it is just a review book so you will definitely need a video resource or some sort of learning resource and you can use first aid more of like a notes book right so all of you need to buy um, or at least have a PDF of first aid because it is really really useful so the second most important resource that I used was med school bootcamp I use this as my primary video resource because I'm a very visual learner. I like to learn from uh, videos. So I used all the system wise videos that have been given in uh, uh, bootcamp. I could not go through the anatomy bootcamp section. I went through the step one preclinical part where they've given, you know, uh, each um, system wise videos so i went through all of them and i absolutely loved it what i'm trying to tell basically is that if you go and sit down and start reading from first aid you are not going to understand much because it's just a review book right but if you go and look at bootcamp videos and then come back and read first aid everything just makes sense yeah so this was one really major resource that i used i did not use boards and beyond uh, uh, or Pathoma because I had used Pathoma in second year. I did not feel the need to go through Pathoma again. I felt like bootcamp was enough and I, I just didn't go through boots and beyond at all. The third resource I used uh, was Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Pharma. Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Pharma is again an amazing amazing resource. I feel like I didn't even read micro and pharma from first aid i didn't even go through it i just watched sketchy micro sketchy pharma and i was getting almost 80 percent of the questions right right away so that's how effective they were i absolutely loved so i used these three resources in my pre-dedicated period 
in my dedicated period i was mainly focusing on um, filling up the gaps in places where i did not understand uh, certain topics or i was basically trying to fine tune my question solving skills so in this period the major major resource i used was uol um but it was also one big mistake that i did in using uol that i will talk about uh, a little later uh, yeah so the major resource that i used <laughs> was uol and um, hands down uol is one of the most important resources that you will use for your step one preparation um believe it or not my nbme scores and my you, you, you know self assessment scores literally went from a 56% to an 83% uh, when i started using uol so that's how much of a difference uol makes to your prep it is very very important uol is basically a question bank i was using uol as my major question bank i sort of used a little bit of true learn question bank as well but uol was my major question bank uh, in my dedicated period and the other small resources that i used uh, uh, in my dedicated period was um, dirty medicine and uh, randy neal videos for biostatistics and uh, hi guru uh, videos for certain uh, topics which i felt there was a little bit of a gap in understanding in so these were all um, video resources that were very high yield review kind of videos and also another amazing resource that i used in my uh, dedicated period was divine intervention podcast testing resources that i used in my dedicated period were uwsa nbme and free 120s so uwsa is basically uol self assessment which is basically sort of a mock exam that is uh, Uh, given by uol question bank and nbmes and free 120s are basically mock exams that are released by uh, the nbme itself nbme is the authority that sets your step one question paper as well so it is very very important to go through your uh, nbme as well as free 120s so i took uwsa 1 uwsa 2 uh nbme 27 nbme 29 and nbme 31 so and uh, i also took a free 120 so in total i had taken six mock tests um if you guys want to know how i progressed through my mock tests what were my scores and how i improved my scores uh let me know in the comment section below i'll make another video about it so these were the basic resources that i used coming to the last section now the mistakes that i made that you definitely should not be making number one most important mistake i did was starting u world late um a lot of people tell this i had heard a lot of people tell it uh, my seniors as well but i did the same mistake again please 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 don't do this mistake start solving questions from u world very very early on in your prep I started solving UOL when I had only one month left for my exam, which was a terrible, terrible thing to do because UOL has almost three thousand five hundred to four thousand questions, and it is very important to uh, cover most at least eighty to ninety percent of these questions because most of the questions that you see on your step one exam is going to be based on all the knowledge that you will get out of UOL. So I put myself in a very bad situation where I had just one. month and almost 3000 questions to complete from you all so every day i was doing around 120 questions per day with review which was extremely stressful you should not be doing this please early on in the in your prep only start doing at least one block of questions one block of question on you world is 40 questions if you don't want to do one block you can just start with 10 questions 20 questions it's not necessary that you always do one block so please start solving questions very early on in your prep i feel like i should have just started solving questions one month into my prep it's unless you're testing yourself you cannot answer the questions on nbme because unlike 
you know how we are used to an MBBS uh, step one is vastly different it's not passive learning at all for step one it is a lot of active learning and only if you have solved a lot of questions you'll be able to answer the second mistake I did was not reviewing my NBMEs so what I did was I gave a lot of mock tests I gave UW essays but I did not review them properly. So out of all the six tests that I gave, I actually only reviewed three or four tests properly. NBMEs and free 120s are extremely representative of your step one exam. And um, I even saw so many people telling that they actually got direct questions <clears throat> repeated in their step one exam from what they had seen in their NBMEs. So please, please, please make sure you give yourself time to review NBMEs after you give them as well, okay? And the third mistake I did was I gave a free 120 early on in my prep, whereas you should actually give your free 120 as the last exam in your prep. So what I did was I gave UWSA 1, immediately after that I gave my free 120 and uh, subsequently I started giving my NBMEs. Now this is not probably a good thing to do because uh, uh, free 120 is more representative of your step 1 exam and it is free like it says and you actually get a score you actually get a percentage even in NBMEs you'll get a score so yeah I just felt like I should have given a uh, free 120 towards the end of my prep and not in the beginning so just keep these things in mind I guess so um, yeah, I think I covered a lot of things that I wanted to cover in this video. I will actually be releasing a series of videos uh, in the future if you guys want about how to solve new world effectively, um, how to make a use of the resources that I mentioned effectively and what resources helped me, you know, uh, improve my NBME scores and all these kind of things and certain tips and tricks that I used to rule out options and answers in my exam. So if you guys want that, please do let me know in the comment section below. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, please do let me know in the comment section below, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more such videos on USMLE and to follow me through <laughs> on my USMLE journey. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.